Join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There we go. Welcome to the <clears throat> September 9, 2019 Selectman's Meeting. Um, tonight we have Jim Waddell here to my left. Uh, Rusty is not, Gretel is not going to be here tonight. Mary Louise Wolseley, Regina Barnes, and Town Manager Fred Welch. <clears throat> First, we're going to have public comment. Anyone wishing public comment, please join us. Good evening. Good evening. Marianne Dion, Hudson Conservation Coordinator. Um, I'm just here to remind people that we have an upcoming event in the Town Forest. Uh, this Saturday uh, called Bio Blitz. So basically we're going to be out there um, trying to identify as many species as possible within the town uh, land that's owned in the town forest. Uh, we'll be looking for birds, insects, shrubs and flowers, trees and fungi. So it runs, the birding session is early in the morning. It starts at 7 and the rest of them uh, start at 9 and we'll wrap up at 1.30. So we encourage people to join us. It's posted on the town website, and um, <clears throat> we're able to do this with um, help from the New Hampshire University of New Hampshire Cooperative Extension. Good. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. I like your new look. Oh, thank you. Nice. <laughs> Others wishing to speak at public comment? Good evening. My name is Al Giordano. I live on 5 Second Street, Hampton, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, submitted letters in regards to uh, my neighbor that lives on 737 Ocean Boulevard uh, in regards to uh, a light that shines in my home. Um, I'm only asking for a simple request that she doesn't shine the light in my home. Uh, it's very intrusive. It goes on and off all night with motion sensors and uh, it's annoying. It's just a, a simple request. If they shine it on their own prop, I don't have any objections to lights as long as it doesn't shine in my home. Thank you for your comments. Okay, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Others wishing to speak this evening? Good evening, my name is Anthony Fusco. I live at 10 Boar's Head Terrace, Hampton Beach, New, uh, Hampton, New Hampshire. Uh, also is the owner of Ocean Gaming down on uh, um, Ocean Boulevard. And I would like to tell you I'm in total support of sports betting. I think it would be a wonderful attraction for us down here at the beach. Um, since we put Keno in, it has done nothing but help our, our attendance and has brought up our, our um, increase in, in people coming in, and which is resulting in more money going to the charities, et cetera, and taxes going to the town. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be assistant towns, I think, that will be voting this in. And it would be, I hate to see it go from our town to another town. Um, most of all, it's been a wonderful thing here that Hamden done for us down here. And every single year, we just keep getting better and better. And the most of all, we've seen an increase during our winter and our early, early um, spring months, which is telling me that more people are coming down to the beach earlier than just during the summertime, which is, uh, I think, very much to the promotions and also to the town uh, and how much they try to help us all around. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for your time, and thank you for everything. Thank you. Please join us. Good evening, Charlie. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Charlie Preston, 47 Great Path. I, uh, I wrote a couple of things down so I could try to do this quick. <laughs> you know, I, I was doing a little research on the sports gaming. I support it, you know, if it's an allowed use in this state, but I spoke about 11 years ago. The building that Ocean Gaming is in was fixed up by Terry, the new owner today. He spent a lot of money and then he took a lot of grief from the town about cutting up the pavement. Finally, we got over that. But then he procured a tenant to run a charitable gambling operation. At the time I came to speak for that operation, I, don't know, I didn't know anybody in there, but the HB at the, at the time wasn't sure they wanted a, you know, that operation in a, in a family beach. But anyway, I, you know, at the time I said, it's really not our business, and it, it happened. Well, Ocean Game is a success story at Hampton Beach. Ten summers, but more importantly, nine winters. 
Anybody that can make it in Hampton Beach in nine winners <laughs> is doing something right. I don't think in that, in that 10 years time that I have ever heard of a problem. I never even visited this, this establishment until my mother passed away. And that was in February 2016. And my mother frequented this place for the whole 10 years, as did my father. I didn't start going until after my mother passed away. And the reason I went was to see my father whom I'd like to say goes on occasion. <laughs> what I have seen is a very well-run operation that provides many jobs, donates to local nonprofits, and I'm sure they pay a room and meals tax daily. I don't know what's going to happen with this because, you know, it's kind of fluid what's going on with it all, but we should support this if we can get it in Hampton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mike Edgar, uh, Seven Ans Terrace. I'm also uh, in favor of uh, the sports uh, betting. I'm not usually one that uh, I guess supports uh, gambling in general, but uh, ever since I've seen how uh, ocean gaming is run, uh, it's it, it it's a great uh, it's a great place down there. It's clean. You go in there, you don't see people just hanging around. It's really good. I. I was really surprised uh, because I visited it a different way. So I know how much it helps the charities because that's why I was going down to check it out because I'm associated with a charity that it helps uh, quite a bit. And uh, I, I really hope that, uh, that the town will end up supporting it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll move on to announcements of the community calendar. Mr. Waddell? Yeah. It, just remember, it's still it's the beginning of the school year. Drive carefully when you're on the roads, please. Uh, watch out for children. Um, the other thing is I was down at the Seafood Festival all three days this week. There's a lot of moving parts down there, a lot of people in town. Uh, things seemed to run very smoothly. There were a lot of people. It was People were having a good time. So that's all I have. Mrs. Walsley. I don't have anything tonight, Mr. Chairman. Regina? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I just want to note we received a notice that the Rockingham Planning Commission will be having a meeting on September 11th at 7 p.m. at the Stratum Library, and it's a discussion of hazardous mitigation grant assistance and a mitigation planning overview. I know there's been some concerns as far as the flooding and things like that in Hampton. So that might be a good meeting for people to go to if they're interested. Um, and also, there is going to be a public hearing here in Hampton for the 2021-2030 10-year state plan on Monday, September 23rd, 6 p.m. at the Hampton Seashell Complex. And I wasn't around this weekend for the Seafood Festival, but to add on to what Selectman Waddell said, I want to say that I talked to the business owner down on C Street, and they were very appreciative this season as to not have the trash bins out in front of their uh -huh. business, and also that I guess there was refrigerators or coolers or something that weren't as loud as the ones last year. So they were very pleased and they wanted to thank uh, Mr. John Nine and the Seafood Festival Committee. That's all I have. Rick, I just forgot something. Yeah, yeah I forgot that the 9-11 ceremony on Wednesday is 9-11 at the American Legion. It is a moving ceremony. They put names on the memorial and it's well worth everybody's time. Everybody in town, every citizen really should attend that. 6 p.m.? 6 p.m., I believe, yes. Okay. <clears throat> yes, it sounds like the Seafood Festival was a big success, and um, we're hoping that this 9-11 event, which has been very <clears throat> nice every other year, I'm sure it's going to be very moving this year as well. Thank you uh, for, <clears throat> you know, I'm glad to hear that it works so well at the Seafood Festival. The weather was nice, and we all have to be thankful for the hurricane didn't hit. So, approval of minutes. Mr. Chairman, I will move that we approve the minutes of August 26, 2019, public and non-public sessions. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have the consent agenda. Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman? Yeah. I will move the consent. We have another, don't we have an, a one additional thing, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Oh, <coughs> I want to mention that. We, uh, we have a, a petition that came in late uh, 
from Smutty Nose for their 25th anniversary birthday party, which will be <laughs> held on the 21st from 2 a.m. to for four hours till 6 p.m. 2 a.m. Yeah. 2 p.m. to 6 6 p.m. Oh. And I want to say that we do have uh, number three, uh, the Heritage Commission appointment, Gary Patton, for an alternate. Oh, yeah. He's sitting here in the audience. We thank him for coming in. I was going to move the consent agenda with the exception of number two, the easement deed. I'd like to discuss that. Okay. And I'd like to move uh, otherwise one through five. I'll second it. All, all those in favor? Unanimous. Congratulations, Mr. Patton. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> that was hard. Like to speak? <laughs> uh, you'll do a great oh, job. You'll right. have plenty of time right. to speak <laughs> there, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. He'll be a great addition. So and Mrs. Yes, yeah. the easement deed here. 236 Winnicott. This is Green and Company again. Uh, at least they could show what they're doing. Uh, I, I'm i wondering if we are, I guess the, uh, the building inspector is, is taking a look at it, but I noticed that they've got in the uh, next to last paragraph, in the event that any of the said poles and wires or associated equipment installed pursuant to the easement shall lie in or upon land, et cetera, I hope we don't have the same problem here that we see uh, down on Church Street and some of the uh, the messes that those people have gone through because of the light and all, this, all the things on the poles. So I'm hoping this was looked at really closely. Um, I'm a little dubious about it. So do, do we have to have, does someone want to make that? I'll make the motion to approve it. I'll second it. All those in favor? Three. I'm opposed. And one opposed. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, under appointments, we have Chris Jacobs, DPW Director, and Jen Hale, Deputy DPW Director. Good. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. A lot of people have been talking about the good work you're doing with the uh, committee for the waste management and all of that. And so it sounds like people didn't even know you were here before, Chris, but they're talking about you all the time. Uh -oh. And it's all good. Tried to stay. Uh, he knew you were here. Oh, okay. Just trying to do my job and not ruffle too many feathers. <laughs> right. um, so we're here for uh, our quarterly report, um, and I believe there's going to be other questions from the floor, and we're, I hope we're prepared to answer uh, the other questions you may have. Um, We have uh, one, only one new hire to uh, advise the board about. Um, it's a new labor position in the sewer and drain section. Um, his letter recently went out. Um, is that what I signed this morning? It yeah. is. Okay, that's how recent it was. And uh, so uh, maybe in my next report I can tell you how tall he is or how young he is or I don't know. <laughs> something, something positive. Uh, Steve Vitale uh, has been with us for a number of years, and he requests to be transferred from the transfer station over to highway. Uh, it's, it's a request, uh, internal request, uh, and we normally, um, unless there's any objections, don't uh, hold those back. Um, we're currently, um, we call this bidding season, along with the uh, pr preparation of our uh, <laughs> budget for next year we also have a number of bids out right now for snow plowing services uh, and somebody doesn't have to be a huge contractor I think one of the people we uh, contracted with last year, three quarter or one ton pickups and we assigned them routes uh, suitable to their equipment uh, we're also bidding out uh, the sidewalk snow snow removal equipment that we uh, acquired money for at the last town meeting our landfill monitoring services, compost removal, and brush grinding. Uh, all of these come at this time so that we can get these numbers into uh, our proposed budget and then before the budget committee some, some valid numbers. Uh, with that, I'll let Jennifer go over our current major projects. Uh, many of these you've heard of before, but they're progressing and some are new, so I'll run through them fairly quickly. Uh, we are doing the LED streetlight conversion that we've talked about in the past, uh, the ultimate intent to save um, money in the long run. Uh, also have a better light fixture um, and one that will last us a longer time. 
Uh, the lights were manufacturers and deliveries have started. So we're actually receiving them, uh, storing them at our facility and uh, installation is scheduled for this fall. Uh, so hopefully uh, we will be up and running uh, quicker than we thought, which is a great thing. Um, we also have submitted the energy efficiency rebate paperwork uh, to Unitil. So hopefully this all comes together as uh, one big package. We had the second household hazardous waste day. Uh, this year we did put on two of them at the request from doing all the surveys. Uh, we had 233 participants. Uh, that's right on key with our other ones. So again, a useful uh, service that we hope uh, everybody uh, continues to support uh, so that we can continue to keep having the household hazardous waste days. Uh, we are planning another two in 2020. It will all be based, obviously, on um, if we go through the warrant process and it's approved. Uh, one of the big projects that's been talked about, I've received many emails, uh, phone calls, and questions, uh, what's happening with Lafayette Road? Uh, we are not going to start that work this fall. We are going to wait till spring. Uh, we've been working with the engineers on many of the finer details uh, that we need to just have right. There's... Uh, some ADA things, uh, utility poles in the way. Uh, we decided that we'll get it out to bid uh, this year, uh, but it will be fresh start uh, for the spring. Uh, this will also allow us to work with uh, business owners, uh, some that have reached out yet again saying, can we look at it one more time? Can we make sure uh, this is really what's gonna work? So now we'll have that extra time to do it. Uh, Mill Pond Dam, construction is complete. Uh, in fact, we received the Asbelt survey today. Um, that was after we wrote that we're waiting for the Asbelt surveys <laughs> in this uh, report. We will review it, we'll submit it to the state. The state has already signed off on the dam construction. This is just the last piece of the closeout package. Uh, so we are happy to say that that one is right there and almost done. Um, our asset management software. Uh, I like to put this into the report so everybody understands how much we do use this uh, on a daily basis. We've had 262 service requests, 335 work orders submitted through the system uh, this year alone. That's on top of any of our everyday normal activities. So these are calls from residents, um, concerns uh, from many of you that get put into the system and uh, work orders get generated and um, the additional work gets done. We track it, we take pictures of it, uh, we can track it for costing purposes. It's really a tool, uh, the whole purpose uh, of using it. Uh, it attracts our it tracks our catch basin cleaning, uh, our sewer maintenance, uh, other items that are also required under our permits. So again, um, very happy that we have implemented this and continue to use it. The grist mill renovation, uh, Power Builders has completed their work to preserve the mill. Uh, the funding that was used for that was actually from a Warren article a few years ago. Uh, so that one is now complete. The Black uh, Smith Shop renovation, uh, they started their work about August, mm -hmm. about a month ago. Uh, the first por portion of the work is to remove the floorboards so that they can access the foundation from the inside. Um, they'll shore up the foundation and replace the sill beams. Uh, this will get us the stable uh, structure that we're going to need uh, before replacing the roof shingles and uh, getting the brick fireplace replaced. So again, uh, that work is ongoing. Another project that is done, the only thing that we're waiting on is uh, some warranty items, the Church Street Force Main. Uh, they have been up and running. We've had no issues. Uh, everything is as uh, we had hoped it to be. The warranty issues that I'm talking about are things such as making sure the grass continues to grow up through fall. Um, I have some paving stuff that I want them to address down on Church Street itself, yeah. uh, but they're very minor items and not actually sewer items, just part of the uh, project itself. Uh, as many of you know, Park Avenue is the ongoing project of the week, or last week and probably the next few weeks. Uh, unbeknownst to us and not with happiness, uh, we've hit ledge. So it took us a week and change longer to get across Park Avenue, wow. uh, thinking that, well, hey, we're just going in the same place they had the pipe last time. Well, if you all remember, that was Lafayette Road as well. Well, they put the pipe in last time 
right on the ledge. So we have a few elevation adjustments and we're adding a whole nother pipe. Uh, so we've been working out there to basically hammer out all the pipe, uh, not the pipe, the r ledge that's there. Uh, today they were on the Tuck Field side of Park Avenue getting ready to set an eight foot catch basin structure and again uh, we hit some ledge. So we'll be working on that uh, tomorrow. We were hoping to have the structure set and by next Monday be on the other side over by Kins Kingdom. Uh, but that uh, everybody stay tuned for your call alls and your email blasts and town alert news and Facebook. The minute we know which day the traffic patterns will change, uh, we will get the boards all reprogrammed um, so that they say which side to come in from. PD, fire will all be alerted. The school bus will be alerted. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do it that way, but we're looking like the beginning of next week. Uh, we are continue to work with our engineers on the wastewater treatment uh, plant facilities upgrades. We had a meeting two weeks ago where we took the plants and actually walked the entire plant with a table and the plans uh, going through each improvement that is proposed uh, from the priority list uh, that was developed uh, from the feasibility study. Uh, this project uh, is, will get submitted to DES for approval uh, because of the funding sources, and then it will go out to bid over the winter. Uh, so again, we can expect to see construction next year um, for the plant work as well. The Meadow Pond Hampton Harbor studies, both projects are ongoing. Um, we've had some trouble with two of our sensors. Uh, one was actually vandalized uh, a week ago. And another one, um, ironically, there's not enough water to keep it <laughs> floating. Uh, it just so happens where it was put, uh, we're not getting data, but we are collecting actively. Um, UNH has been uh, working with me basically almost daily. Mm -hmm. uh, making sure we fine tune everything. We look to have the draft report with recommendations out uh, at the beginning of next year. Uh, in the meantime, we're waiting to hear from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation grant that was applied to uh, at the end of June, beginning of July. That would supplement and take all the work that we're doing now wow. into uh, three to four alternatives into a preliminary design. Mm -hmm. um, the goal would be to next year apply to take that into um, design and permitting and construction. So to just keep moving uh, all this along. So fingers are still crossed um, that these funding sources come across, uh, come through because they're they're truly needed. And then that's where we're at from a project perspective. Uh, by department. Uh Highways, um, because we're now uh, essentially uh, at a smaller uh, work effort with respect to solid waste collection, there's actually now crews or a crew available to go out and do all the pothole and pavement repairs, which we're aggressively hitting between now and November when the plants would close. Um, we have heard from a number of people that um, the crack ceiling that we've done over the last couple of years. Um, sticking the tires, uh, making it difficult for motorcyclists, bicyclists, things of that nature. Even some people have noticed it in their cars. Uh, I think even next week we have a meeting with another consultant to see if we can use a different type of material and avoid that in the future. Um, we did meet with Brock's Paving last week to go over our uh, paving schedule. Um, they've lost a whole month of time this this paving season due to the rainy weather, uh, but they're still intending on, uh, we're intending to work with them to pave Beach Plum Way, Mill Road, Timber Swamp Road, West Ridge Drive, and Smith Road, and some other small areas in town. Uh, we're also working with uh, Coastal Paving, with their contractor, mm -hmm. to do some um, patching work. Uh, we'll do the milling, I think they're gonna end up doing the patching. Um, we're going to continue to stress the importance of needing to fix the uh, infrastructure uh, under the roadways before we pave them. That's probably our limiting f factor, and uh, we hope to come forward in March with a, uh, a warrant article for Lock Road to finish fixing that uh, so that we can move forward. Uh, vehicle maintenance. September is inspection month. Um, Jennifer went through and updated the rolling stock report, and I believe handed that out to everyone. 
Um, there's some things that are not on there, like the new trailer, because mm -hmm. it hasn't arrived yet. The new Mac hasn't arrived yet. Um, things of that nature. Uh, when they do, they'll instantly be added. Um, yeah, we do have three vehicles benched. If you're out beside the, uh, our offices, you'll see the vehicles there. Some of them um, we've determined, you know, when they get up to five and $6,000, it's just not expedient to pump that kind of money into them. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones that I expect that we're actually trading in. Um, I did hear from uh, Mac the other day, the truck body uh, for our new six wheel dump truck has arrived up at Fair HP Fairfield in uh, <coughs> Maine, and uh, it'll be assembled and hopefully delivered to us by our contract date, which is somewhere towards the end of October. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, sewer and drain has been very busy. Um, they restored some drainage all falls on Oak Road. Um, and this summer alone, they've cleaned 240 feet of drains, 9,470 feet of sewer mains, and 197 catch basins. Um, they're kind of the, uh, the quiet group of public works in that they do this stuff, and while they just seem like numbers to some people, um, if they didn't clean 9,000 feet of sewers, we'd see uh, the ripple effect of uh, a multitude of problems uh, would arise, and people would experience them in their, their houses and basements. Um, they also assisted uh, through dig safe notifications, 383 big safe <laughs> notifications and they've got 35 construction inspections. So when you hear that building inspection is really um, busy, um, so are they with respect to uh, how the sewer starts. Uh, wastewater treatment plant operations. Uh, just some quick numbers. The plant flow as of uh, the end of July is 55% of what it was, uh, the amount that it was last year. Um, and that's pretty much on track. Uh, uh, I think it's going to come in a little bit low um, due to, um, as a matter of fact, uh, if I read from my own notes, that it's down by 24 million gallons. It doesn't sound like much, but that's due to the amount of, if you will, uh, rainstorm events we get, uh, groundwater, flooding, things of that nature. Uh, same thing with uh, sludge. We are up a little bit with sludge at 18 and a half tons, but pretty much on track, about the same uh, total amount of tonnage, just under 3,000 wet tons will be generated and disposed of this year. And septage, um, <coughs> we've received 70, as of the same point last year, through August, we've received an additional 7, 75,000 gallons of uh, septage uh, being hauled in. Uh, what, what does that mean to the town? Um, well, that corresponds correctly with the increased in sludge disposal, but it also it's an increased revenue source for the town. Um, so I'm, I'm expecting that we're going to hit about the same number we did last year, about 1.9 million gallons. Um, towards the back of your, um, if you really love the numbers, they're all back here to report. I do, but I'm dry. I'm an engineer. Uh, finest Kind Brewing. Uh, we've met with a brewery a couple of times over the summer. Um, they are, they have currently installed two of the four digesters um, that they need to run their plant. Right now at their current production level, they only need two of the digesters, but the plans and the site were uh, designed and built around the possibility of being four. I think later this month, we're gonna actually uh, do an uh, operational inspection and we're going to see what they're actually hitting for a BOD load, which mm -hmm. was the major issue that I think we had with them in the past. Um, they're doing everything that uh, we've asked them to do uh, and more, and we've got great communication with them. So um, I'm expecting a, a <coughs> lower numbers uh, load-wise out of them in the coming years. Um, it have been requested, and I delivered to... Uh, Regina, uh, copies of the last three monthly reports that come from Finest Kind, um, but the current, uh, none of these reports will reflect what their current uh, wastewater strength is because it doesn't, uh, doesn't report out what the digesters are actively been doing. I think they're still in a case of their uh, 
what do I would call it, a run-up or a Yeah, they just down? seeded it, so they'll start feeding it. It uh, just happened the other day. Okay. Uh, transfer station, um, we've been trying to um, look at doing things differently. One of the experiments was uh, we burned brush about two weeks ago. We got an awful lot of good support for that. <laughs> um, a lot of people Thanks were. Stickers. Yes, I am. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, a lot of people uh, noticed it. Um, I don't think we're going to be doing that again. Uh, I didn't even like the end result in that um, for days afterwards, all you could smell was something burnt around. Uh, I, as the uh, captain of the ship, don't get comfortable mm -hmm. when I smell things burning, whether they have been or well in the future. So I don't think we're going to be doing that again. And that's why we've moved forward with trying to bid out brush uh, for next year. Uh, we have started to, we've ordered uh, new concrete blocks to get started on the construction of that residential drop-off area that we've talked about in the past, so that'll be happening this fall. Um, Refuse-wise, um, we're up 146 tons of, for refuse over the same period uh, a year ago. And our cost to date is 336, where we typically spend <coughs> 510,000. So we we seem to be on track. Um, where we went up 146 tons in trash, we went down 160 tons in recycling. Um, and we're we're about this tracking the same point last year. We're at about 70 percent of the total stream. Cost-wise, as far as we now pay a penalty fee. Uh, for uh, contaminated recycling, we're at, we've paid out to date fifty thousand six sixty. I expected that it was going to be about a hundred thousand for the year, and so, so that's falling uh, on track, if you will. Uh, the two uh, new um, Mac uh, sidearm trucks are working really well, um, and uh, the idea of leasing that third sidearm truck uh, has worked out really well. Uh, matter of fact, we've just ended our three-month period with that, and we notified Premier Leasing to come and get their truck. Uh, I th believe I'm going to, matter of fact, I have included that lease, the idea of leasing a, a truck for that peak peri summer period in next year's budget. Yeah. And, uh, yes, Jennifer and I have been, uh, when we're not here on this Monday night, we're with the Solid Waste Committee in this same room on another Monday night. Yeah. Um, they've asked a lot of good questions. Uh, we've provided an awful lot of information. Uh, they're getting down to the point where um, they've asked me to formulate uh, warrant articles that they uh, could review and possibly recommend to the Board of Selectmen to bring forward. And that's where we stand. Questions? Questions. Mrs. Wolsey? Yeah. Uh, Fred, I'm assuming that that um, Chris got this letter that yeah, we got. Two copies. The, yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, I, I have no. I know you're you're losing longtime employees, and I'm sure that it's it's tricky to be getting new people on board, especially since. A lot of people don't want to work hard these days, but I've noticed the kind of throwing the card aside and whatever. And uh, maybe if if a little pep talk could be given, we agree. Because I don't want to lose my cart because I've had it a long time. Um, sewer a sewer um, collection system and PFAS issues, your memo of August uh, August 16th. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, how you have, what, 8 million, 10 million for the first phase of rehabbing the treatment plant? It's uh, a, just a shade over $11 million. Okay. How, how far into that are you? They, the plans are at 60%, meaning they've identified the work. Um, we physically went around with them in the last two weeks, uh, room, to, room by room, going over. You know, they said, oh, we're going to put a door here. We're putting a window there. We're okay. closing this off. And we're like, well, that won't work because yeah. the door and the window are in the same place, things of that nature. So um, they're, they're very much formulated now. It's now getting them the last probably 35% where we dot the I's, cross the T's before we 
Mm -hmm. that I'll That's kind of where I'm going. Do you have a ballpark as to when you can start the, the second phase? I think we're going to be bidding late December and looking for a Ju January bid opening with a spring break, break into the ground. Get in. Now, what, what dollar amount is the second segment going to be? That you would 10, what, 10, 11 million the first segment. What's the next segment? We haven't roughly? even formulated a number. Oh, okay. But the, the, the middle chunk will be coming up next. The middle. I think you get through a whole year's worth of uh, improvements, and then there'll be ongoing and constant discussions as to what should or shouldn't be in yeah. the second phase. And I think you're looking two or three ballot sessions out before you'd okay. see that Warren article okay. uh, come before the board. Because that's a heck of a job to have to yeah. do. I, I, yeah. I admire it's, your... It's a heck of a job to do it and to keep the plant running at the same time. Yeah. And then your, um, let's see, your, I've got your bid proposal sheet uh, for the Park Avenue culverts. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything is up to date with this and... Yeah, so we did include a estimate for ledge, uh, even though we know we didn't know if we were going to have it. They have not exceeded those numbers. Okay. Uh, so right now we are able to... Because uh, you don't have the dollar amount. Right. So yes. the actual contract, which that bid form gets made into with the company, that contract does include a dollar amount that was approved for a small quantity of ledge. If we continue to we may be having a different discussion, but right now it is all within uh, the contract amount that was approved by the board. Because you've got so much going, it's a wonder you know your names. Um, I messed up. We've got the, uh, let's see, that's the Hampton appointment to the Commission on Drinking Water. I, I don't think you're too excited about that, but I put aside a lot of this. Oh, the, ah, the Exeter Water Department. Now, we got the notice of a standard maximum contaminant level. It's my recollection that the small segment of Hampton that sends sewage to Exeter, right. and we pay Exeter for that, does that have any relation to this? I don't see how there would be a contaminant if the septage is going straight through to Exeter. Is this... The are they only having possible way I can think there'd be a contaminant is if the water company can't meet the PFA levels that have been yeah. established in the future. That would be the only possible way of contaminating. But I don't know how it would be coming from us. It says the Exeter Water Department water system recently file, violated drinking water standards, but we're not, well, yeah. we're sending septage, but we're not we're doing not, anything no, with the drinking not water. not the drinking water. Yeah. So that's totally separate. not really relevant? Okay. Correct. Hey, I, I do read the stuff. I know. Pile that comes. Um, let's see, your budget. That's good, and you've almost completed it. On uh, at 2.36 Winnicana, have you taken a hard look at what the problem might be when that development is finished? I know a lot of the neighbors had a real real problem. They were really scared about runoff from that development going down and across Winnicott Road and all all in the neighborhood. Are you being would you be kind of keeping an eye on there to see if the drainage causes a problem? Without a doubt. I mean I was out there today for a good half hour. Well, they I've haven't out there. they haven't built the development yet. But they, the road is in, and the road is stabilized, and that's where a lot of the runoff comes off. You'll okay. see the sprinklers going on. Okay. Uh, that is intentional to make sure that those rain gardens are thriving and growing and working the way they designed, and right now we don't have any indications okay. of issues. I've been working with homeowners at the back end, uh, so the Levitt Roadside, assuring them that you know water isn't being pushed towards their properties. That's not People what was nervous. approved. Yeah. Right, so it's trying to work with everybody to make sure we do it according to the plan that was approved. Yeah, that is a wet area, and it kind of, and it it goes down. Through when it I can of. honestly say, and, and you know, with thirty years of experience, this is one of the few subdivisions I can actually remember where somebody went in and con constructed, 
and, and actually allowed the grass to grow before they put in their first house foundation. Uh. Now, this same, well, same developer, different Hilliard Drive. The road was in, it was graveled. I think we were curbing it. We might have had a basin, and they were still working on the detention basin at the end. Yeah. Didn't need it functioning yet because they'd blocked off any of the yeah. catch basins. But this particular subdivision, I was impressed. Okay. We have got grass in all those stormwater retention or treatment areas right. long before you even see. And that was a, a condition. First footing. Yeah. Going it was a condition. Yeah, I know there was big concern on yeah. that. Yeah. So that it's, it's being done. They're following the letter of what their approval was. Yeah. Now the planning board, Mary Batchelder, Liberty Lane West, Timber Swamp Road, all the development that's coming to play in that area. Um, there's no sewer over there. People are on wells. You do, I think, have a problem. Some of the roads aren't wide enough, enough and all that. Are you, are you working with the planning board? Are they asking you so, anything about? Because when you're looking at all these guys, the, the, the number of units, and then they're 60 units, 80 units, it's all up and down and all over the place here. What is this po potentially doing to you and to the Public Works Department now that they're really starting to, to go crazy on developing over there, especially with those condos? So uh, first part of the question, we, we are part of PRC. So before it even gets to the planning board level, we're working with developers along with the planning department, the building department, the police department, fire department, yeah. uh, conservation commission, and we work through a lot of the technical aspects. Yeah. So in this case, the project that's actually making it to the planning board mm -hmm. has been in front of us for almost a year and a half oh, because it was going to have a negative effect. Like what it was, yeah. it was too much. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't like the way it was planned from a safety standpoint and circulation for fire and all those great things. So the sewer that they'll be using is the Liberty Lane private sewer that we went through and did all those documents for. That's their right because it's part of the Liberty Lane properties that were all done. Mm -hmm. Water is Aquarian um, in the Liberty Lane area mm -hmm. and they are coming out and they'll have water uh, for Liberty Lane, uh, through Liberty Lane. The septage? So oh. there are not septic sites on this site. Mm -hmm. It is sewer. You, that's what I'm Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you're not having to worry about... Okay. Right. And then as far as the impact, they, very clear. It, it's a condo association. Yes. Private roads. Yes. Private um, containment, I call it. They're in charge of their drainage and their drainage systems. They're in okay. charge of their water. They're in charge of their sewer. They're in charge of their roadways, uh, their pavement, their curbing, their sidewalks. So the town won't have all that landed on them as these developments start making shape not in the not in that development that west side development is scaring me okay and the, the, i we have i have a copy of it says agreement between the town of hampton and the town of exeter retreatment and disposal of wastewater that does that apply just to that little neighborhood over what just to warner lane roberts oh. drive roberts drive that okay uh, okay that's all it applies to and I think that's all I will inflict on you at this time. But thank you for what you do, because you have a horrible burden. You really do. And I understand that. It's, it's a huge um, load to carry on your backs. And I appreciate what you're doing. Gina. Thank you. Yes, I have, I'm going to bring up some questions I have just on your report, and then some other questions that I've already sort of forewarned you about. Um, so the LED street light conversion, do you think that's going to be completed in the fall, or is it going to be something that's going to have to carry forward over into? No, it'll be completed this it's fall. It's supposed to be completed this fall. Okay, awesome. What they're doing is they're delivering us the lights, um, the light package, the housing, the heads. We're storing them for the contractor, and when they come in, they'll literally go, go, go. Just a nice. couple hundred a day. There's only 800 lights, so upside two weeks. That sounds good. Mm. And as far as the hazardous waste collection days, I went to both of them. 
And they were both very well attended, so I definitely <laughs> agree that having two is probably definitely something yep. worthwhile to do. I agree. And on the Church Street Force Main relocation, has that any way affected what we're intaking for over at the wastewater treatment plant since we've replaced and moved those force mains? Well, we're seeing a more um, standardized waste, um, meaning less salt water intrusion, less salt water fluctuations. Hmm. Um, some of it may be the fact that the holes were there for a period of time and we weren't losing wastewater, but we were actually sucking in brackish salt water. Um, huh. from inter and, but I don't have any facts to support that, to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's just that what we're seeing in uh, running the wastewater treatment plant is kind of like working in a bakery, but the ingredients keep shifting every 15 minutes. <laughs> and, and that's... Um, so we're getting less salt water in the ingredient mix, which uh, gives a more uniform uh, operation for the for the plant. But uh, no, um, otherwise it's business as usual. Okay, all right. And um, you sent in Mary Louise has already brought up a couple of them, the memos that you've prepared for the town manager. Yep. Uh, PFOS yeah. and landfill plume wastewater treatment discharge and sludge and how that might have to be incorporated into well it might already is that already being incorporated into the wastewater treatment plant upgrade as far as no there's nothing within the upgrade that um, addresses PFOs or PFOAs um, the reason being is for one the state hasn't really decided what they're going to I mean, they've established guidelines for drinking water, but they have not established guidelines for wastewater or wastewater discharge oh, or uh, the limits that we can discharge in the sludge, if you will, because uh, we know that, that this, this particular chemical does not break down. Mm. It just accumulates, and we're finding that it accumulates in the sludge portion. Um, so they, they, being DES, said that about late December, January, they would are going to be coming out with their standards and recommendations. Uh, the only one I've kind of heard that, uh, put out there as a soft landing is they may be asking us to, when it comes to the monitoring wells around the landfill, to start testing those quarterly instead of the twice a year that we've been doing. So in my new budget uh, presented to the, to the manager's office, we have included uh, increased costs, if you will, for that testing. Because it'll be a, somewhere around twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollars of additional testing. And but that being for the landfills for the and landfill, landfill monitoring. Landfill Again, landfill. separate than right. um, the wastewater treatment plant, which is also separate from drinking water. But so. it also goes back to that if if Aquarian, you know, they have to do what they have to do to meet the drinking water standards. If they're sending me less PFOA. Right. I'll be getting rid of less PFOA. It'll be less in the sludge. But it'll take a while to, from sure for the process to shake out. Okay, because right now, for due to the default budget, the PFAS testing was eliminated, right, this year? Yes. So we just have to make sure that we have to... Let three prior years, right. We have to do it this November. Right. So we have one round of testing round. So for that's required. It was the additional that so was not So for 2020, in I'm including four rounds. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, and then the memo I really want to talk about is uh, future challenges of the Department of Public Works memo that we received from the director. Yep. And really, and this was done using the asset management software? Yeah, it, it was the culmination of after a year's worth of work you've actually got some decent data now and you can start to look at um, the size of the elephant that you need to, to tame. Exactly. Um, so you know you can look at things like road surface, number of feet of sidewalks, uh, how many feet of clay pipe you have out there that you need to eventually replace, things of that nature and um, and then when you look at the real world cost what we're seeing for bid cost per linear f foot for some of this pipe, it can be very, very expensive. And so it wasn't 
this is not intended was or wasn't intended to be a uh, memo where you know you s smell smoke and you run out of the movie theater. Uh, it's hopefully um, enlighten us that and, and enlighten uh, future taxpayers that you know we're going to have to face some of these costs. They're not going to go away. And um, and it goes back to the question Mary Louise asked: If you you know when is the phase two going to kick in? And what would the phase two look like? Yeah. Well, it'll be a function of the PFOA analysis okay. that the state does and what they come up with for discharge requirements. It'll be a function of how much clay pipe the town actually mm -hmm. participates in to uh, replace, uh, thus reducing the inflow and infiltration. It also depends upon how many more projects, uh, new structures are approved in the town yeah. and how much the overall load coming into the plant yep. so all of those factors are, are too many too many variables for me to look at two or three years out what that actual mm -hmm. scope of work would could look yeah. like i just if I, you don't mind i like to just highlight i think the memo did exactly to me it did exactly what you stated it should it sort of draws a picture of going forward of what needs to be addressed and I've gone through and I've analyzed it, and I said the, it outlines estimated replacement and maintenance costs for roads, sidewalks, sewer and drainage pipe infrastructure throughout the entire town of Hampton. Now, I assume that also includes the Hampton Beach Village District portion of the town? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, total estimated cost is roughly $114.5 Also included is Also included in that is an estimated $1 million in cost to address potential relocation of Hampton Public Works offices to address flooding issues. The Town of Hampton 1231-17 audited financial statements show depreciable assets as 60% depreciated and infrastructure is at 69.7% depreciated. Mm -hmm. It's almost 70% gone. Uh, it's time to invest money in infrastructure and I would say the memo outlines that clear. It also recommends annual appropriations of almost 727,000 for roads. Obviously, these are estimates, but it's a picture. Yeah. 268,000 annual for sidewalks and 800,000 to 1.6 million for a replacement of sewer lines. And that was something that Wright Pierce brought up when they did their. Yeah, that was a similar thing. thing they saw in their report. And you've been making progress with the drainage, as you stated in your report, because we are using the capital reserve fund where appropriately about 300,000 a year is appropriate right. for that. Yep. So I know we had talked before about setting up additional capital reserve funds for public works. Is that something that could be done for some of these other things? It, it's possible, yeah, that could be done or you could use existing mechanisms yet just increase the dollar amount in those mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, if you wanted to say that the road improvement fund could go from 300 to 600 and you could also use that for drainage and sewer uh, so that in other words a complete street type of reconstruction that would in some ways address what you're seeing here mm. so it doesn't have to be a whole new methodology but at least um, well I think these memos are excellent and I would like to ask the board if we can um, direct the town manager to distribute copies of all three of these memos to the planning board the zoning board and the budget committee Excellent. for review. Yes, I agree with you. I like to make that motion. Second. So, what is your motion? To have the town manager distribute these three memos prepared by Public Works to the zoning board, the planning board, and the budget committee. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Do they go to them anyways? No, they come to the board. Okay, and are they on the website? They're not. Not until you digest them, at yeah, least. The, the, for the <laughs> boards. And your feeling on? It's information. These are just the facts. Just yeah. the facts. Okay. Cool. So, so what is the purpose, though? Are you, are you looking to uh, raise the uh, road improvement thing from 300 to 600? Because if that's going to happen, it's not going to pass. No, that was when to <clears throat> answer Regina's question, do we need another account? Well, not necessarily another savings account that we're putting money in, mm -hmm. but I think what the town as a whole needs to come to grasp with is that things like um, the sewer lines, 
the drainage lines. I'm glad we don't own the water lines. <laughs> uh, they've come of age. They've gotten 70% yes. yep. of their useful life. Yep. They're leaking like a sieve. 60% of all the flow that comes to the wastewater treatment plant is I and I, inflow and infiltration. Yep. Well, you can either build a bigger bathtub to handle that, a bigger plant, mm -hmm. or you can seal up the leaks. Yep. And I would hope if we sealed up the leaks, it falls that it would happen naturally. The f infiltration would accordingly creep down and you would avoid Good. having to put in, let's say, the next two aeration lagoons. At, and they were mm -hmm. estimated at $2 million a piece. And and so is this for the uptown area? This is the whole town. Yeah, yeah because we've already been through this. Uh, the When we did the $12 million infrastructure at the beach, we were told that it did correct that problem. So has it or has it? It took, it took a million gallons a day away. It, it it did cut off a million gallons a day from the beach district coming to the wastewater treatment plant. So do you think it has stayed and is in good working condition from when it was done about twelve, about the fourteen, be, fifteen? The beach years area, ago? yes, except for a couple of streets that were not that weren't done. Right. So you'd like to see more of it done in the yes. other areas. Yes. Yeah. I think there needs to be motion. Yeah. Um, as soon as I finish the okay. discussion that I uh, <laughs> want to have. Am I going to get questions um, too? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I just am saying that I feel that you have to decide mm -hmm. what you want to bring as far as warrant articles go because I don't think that you're going to get them all approved. I would agree with you so wholeheartedly. We have to decide what yes. is going to be most important. Yep. So that's it for me. Did you want to say something, Joe? Yeah, please. Thank you. Would we do want to vote on her motion first? Mm -hmm. uh, did you want to discuss the motion? I was just going to question motion? some of the things oh. here, but that, that yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Uh, great report. Super. I agree 100%. Everything you've done is keeping us up to date. Uh, this this one hit me too. Mm -hmm. the, the future. Uh, it was a hard one to write. Yeah, yeah. Future challenges. I mean, that that's that's a big one. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I, the first year I was on the board, we had a, an INI study that we kind of dropped. That that was talking about the streets that hadn't been done on the beach and how much was coming into the wastewater treatment because of that. Mm -hmm. so that yeah. Was good. The other thing is that that struck me the most, and I don't know, like you said, there's no smoke's not there yet, or mm -hmm. not going to yell. But when you talked about being in the being in the hundred year floodplain, no, yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> wastewater treatment plant is yeah. in the hundred year floodplain. Yeah, and we're making a whole bunch of money to upgrade it. I mean, is that going to be all? All of the essential items for the wastewater treatment plant are above it. Okay. The only thing we're in it. Our we're we're offices, in it. Our office is in the it. The vehicle maintenance garage. The you know how to swim? We do. I have actually kayaks. Yes. So. Okay. <laughs> but but I mean that's that's really bad. I mean I mean. Yeah, we just. It's not like I'm promoting that. You know, I get a brand new spanking office, or we right. get a brand new spanking office next year. It's just that I think when you see the rise in tide and you see um, these storms. Um, like what they experienced in Houston last year and the Bahamas this year, they stay longer. And when they stay longer, they drive in more rain and they drive in sustained flooding. Um, it would be short-sighted for me to say that, you know, this department could support the rest of the town, the police and the fire in those instances. Mm -hmm. um, if we're standing in water, we, we really can't. Yeah. And uh, our equipment can't the computers that we use, all that. So we need to think about, I'd rather think about it now <clears throat> and have a plan put together rather than just yeah. willy-nilly yeah. do something and then say, geez, yeah, right. we, we could have spent that money better or, or right. wiser. And that, that was part of the reason for this. This is a planning tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really to say that there's smoke in the... Yeah. No, no, it, it, it's a great planning tool, and I think it's yeah. our responsibility to work in conjunction with you and, right. and keep this and, going so we don't... And I agree with uh, Mr. Griffin is that, yeah, you, no, this is not... We need to be making some effort towards all of these, but not... Well, you can't solve them all. Well, We're not. We don't. We don't have enough hours. Yeah, right. And my question is, why wasn't it solved? Now, Jim, how many years ago was that? Was your first year? 
six, six years? Yeah. Okay. So for the previous nine years, that was talked about. Yeah. Every single year for nine years. Why didn't it happen, Mr. Welch? Was it the public didn't vote for it or what? absolutely didn't work because in nine years it was brought up every single time the yeah. town originally the year before i arrived here the town voted 12 million dollars yes to redo the sewer lines at the beach and there were no plans they just started digging they never finished it mm -hmm. we now have a lot of sewer lines well, down there it's not that there streets. was no plans because i was on the board the whole time there were several i forget the name of the companies they had plans and they all but they weren't finished there was ex actually two or maybe three streets that weren't finished because it ran out of money at the very end actually and there was all the talk yeah. that it was going to be continued but then it never happened it never got voted so it has, People, it has been attempted. Did we it, ever pr uh, put that on as a Warren article? Yeah, pieces of it, yes. Yeah, and it just was turned down by the taxpayers. And I think right. that, you know, there's this is part of the issue. The other part of that project that wasn't done was uh, in the island section, all yes. of those, uh, and those people didn't want them. Uh, to have That's sidewalks difficult. down there. Now, through the years, people have said, well, we do want sidewalks. You know, other people have moved in. But those, and the boards, of multiple years uh, finally said, well, the people don't want the sidewalks, fine, don't give them to them. So they didn't get them, right. and we were hoping that because they didn't get them, those last few streets would be done. But for some reason, it was discussed in depth for nine years, and nothing ever happened. And I presume it's because of the Warren articles going forward that didn't pass. Mm. So we have to think of a better way to do it. And I, and I don't think... In my reading of all the annual reports back through 85, I don't think it was any one group of board of selectmen or any one group of people. What I systemically saw or, or read, and, and it's one thing I heard when I took over, was there needs to be a plan. A public Works Department needs to have a plan. Mm -hmm. and, and I think um, the plan was never really solidified enough but i but different board of bit different right. people that had your job yep. gave their plan and if it wasn't solidified they didn't solidify it right because the board was behind them every inch of the way all the different boards that i've been on and they've submitted plans like you have and i'm not i think it's great your plan that you submitted mm -hmm. but you know it's kind of similar in many ways to what the other people did too but for some reason it just hasn't hasn't happened well, we'll do you know what Four years ago, when I took this position, the first year I brought forth 29 Warren articles. And yeah, <laughs> don't try that again. Because <laughs> no, but what happened was we picked. Then somebody said to me, "You got to go down and do an A, B, and a C." Yeah. Following this plan, which ones do you really want? Yeah. Which ones, eh, and which ones can you can we see in a few years? And by the so the process of doing that, this is kind of like those 29 Warren articles. I, I bring it back. I, I work with you folks and the budget committee and the, the voters. What, I say we at least give them the chance with these Warren articles to decide what they want to do. Yeah. I, think, I think with this asset uh, management software, you know, you've got more data. Right. Yeah. We're able to present the data you know, more succinctly. Right. And I think if people know that I and I costs you money in the end, then you start to say, well, mm -hmm. we've got to spend a little money to save a little money. If people aren't in favor of, let's say, the phase two wastewater treatment bond, then start supporting uh, replacing the clay sewers, yeah. and you'll push that article further down the road. Yeah. You won't avoid it, but you'll... Yeah. I think it's a good idea to target the clay. Uh, if you, you can identify which ones are clay and then just go after a certain percentage of them. We've identified Lock Road as a, as a yeah. road we want to proceed on next year, and it's yeah. going to follow the same pattern as Lafayette, and that we have to do the sewer first because it is all clay sewer, whatever drainage is there, and then mm -hmm. fix the road, mm -hmm. and then it will be done. Yeah. Yeah. I just was down in Florida for where they had that hurricane, and I was in the town that had the closest... Uh, it came to within 80 miles of the coast. And it was interesting, because they did have some fierce rainstorms would blow through, but then they wouldn't stay. They would stop, and they mm -hmm. would start up again maybe a little bit later. But there was no flooding or anything, mm -hmm. very little damage. The only few trees that fell down, I think I saw three trees, but they were obviously old, damaged trees. 
Uh, like I looked at the damage they had in uh, Nova Scotia it was much worse. Mm -hmm. It was oh, yeah. yet in Florida. I got there on Sunday. By Monday, all the way to th Thursday, there wasn't one 7-Eleven open. There was an occasional truck stop that you'd have to go if you wanted something at a mm -hmm. convenience store. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was interesting, and it was interesting to see how much uh, that, you know, just driving around, because about by Thursday, I just couldn't stand sitting in the hotel anymore. Hmm. Uh, but they, their public works people were out working, and the wind was probably 35 or 40 miles an hour, already, you know, getting the trees that might have been in the road. Maybe there were yeah. more. So it was, it was interesting to see how your job would be down there. Yeah. So you do a great job, and I couldn't help but think that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I have one more quick follow-up. Um, since you two worked hard to educate the public on what's trash and what's recycling and whatever, and you have those nice little uh, memos put up, and I'm happy to see that the our cable people are putting those on full screen. Have you noticed a little improvement or anything, getting any feedback? Because those are very informative, and I think that's a big help. We do get a lot of feedback. Uh, they're getting noticed. Uh, people, I think, are realizing they didn't know really what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That was uh, a really smart it's thing to do. It's also not so just clear. You know, just because it's made up of all things that are recyclable yeah, but, doesn't yeah. mean it's recyclable. Yeah. You know, it's simple. Keep it simple. Yeah. Um, but we like the feedback. We like the feedback for those that say, hey, it's still complicated. Can I? Oh. So it's causing conversation um, at the... Uh, committee meetings, you know, one of the recommendations that, you know, we would strongly look forward uh, to is reforming a recycling committee. Having those that are ambitious and have maybe a little bit more time than Chris and I do to, you know, put together, mm -hmm. you know, marketing campaigns and, yeah. you know, get us back to, to magnets and yeah. a, a community, you know, supported effort. I think that would be great. But I think those slides have been a big help. I'm happy oh, to yeah. see them right up there, whole screen, giving good information in nice little chunks. Sure. So thank you for that. Okay, we're moving on to the other part. Did you have more? You, yeah, there was two other things. Yeah. Bicentennial. <laughs> the um, bicentennial wall update. So the plans are still on the shelf. <laughs> That's the update. Yeah. Um, we just were having this conversation about, you know, Warren articles moving forward. Yeah. Uh, the condition of the wall has not changed, meaning it did not get any better. Mm -hmm. um, the revetment that we did as an emergency uh, repair is holding uh, for what it's intended to do. But again, I don't want to, uh, the false security, the wall didn't get an embedded any further. You know, it's still only embedded the six inches it was originally yeah. um, so those plans are on the shelf I mean they can be bid um, with a little fine-tuning you know go back to the engineer change the dates because they are two years old now um, our permitting needs to be looked at uh, we had received all our Army Corps permits and uh, wetland permits Good. Um, but you know I guess this is conversation you know we're coming upon what I call warrant season what are you recommending I think we need to put it on the on the ballot. To so, in your opinion, it's more important. It's uh, more an A and then or a B than yes, a C. Yes, it's an A. Yes. So that's something that yeah. mm -hmm. we've invested the money, the taxpayers' money, the time, uh, the engineering to get the permits. Let's do it. And be done with it. Okay, and Mrs. Wolseley. Rest mm. more comfortably. Good. Now I'm just wondering what effect the rising ocean will have on that. Do you think that will protect 1A, or are we sinking money into something that... Oh, no, it'll definitely protect... You think it will protect the... 1A and the whole community down okay. there, more so than what's currently there. What's okay. currently there rests on sand. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it stays there. Um, the new one will be driven into bedrock, so okay. um, everything else could blow away, and it'll still be there at least okay. as it's drawn. So I think it would well serve the community yeah. to protect the investment that we have. Okay. Protect us. Is, is, it's like buying a new fire truck or buying an, yeah. you know, building a new fire station. It, it's going to serve yeah. to protect the town. 
I went to the um, thing that they, they had on, I think it was DOT that had on um, the uh, climate change, and they had people from the University of New Hampshire, and it was uh, chaired by Chris Pappas. Mm -hmm. And pretty much what the woman that was from the University of New Hampshire, who everybody listened to her advice like it was gospel, and she seemed, you know, <laughs> she's been working on this for 20 years, and it's nothing new, and they have, you know, they she has the approach that she uh, sells basically to the state, and she said it's basically a, a three-prong, uh, um, it's going to fall into three things in the long run three ways that it's going to happen. One way is what we're doing now. Um, then eventually, and she's not sure of a time period. This could happen over a 100-year period, how long it takes, because no one mm -hmm. knows about climate change. But she says one way of doing things is the way it's being done now. The next way is going to be putting up instead of taking away seawalls, putting up more seawalls, oh. not just on the ocean, possibly on the marsh or in certain areas that are vulnerable. The state's oh. prepared to do that in the long run. Yeah. And number three, they'll eventually be, it's going to be up to the town and the states to buy out people's property and yeah. have them move away. Yeah. You know, they'll help, you know, there'll be a period where they're going to help people maybe raise their houses or whatever. Mm -hmm. But eventually, whether yeah. it's 100 years from now, things will, people will have to leave. And they've already done this in areas like yeah. that area up in the mountains about five years ago that had a hurricane that hit up there mm -hmm. and they knocked out three, three or four buildings that washed away on a river. That's an example of what the state will eventually yeah. do here, whether yeah. it's yeah. 10 years from now or 100 years from now. Mm. So no matter what happens, no one's giving up from what I gathered there. Right. Mm. I would agree. Yeah. Other questions? Regina? You know, interestingly, 4,000 years ago, the New Hampshire shoreline was the Isles of Shoals. 16,000 years ago, the New Hampshire shoreline was 16 miles inland. <laughs> yeah, so you really don't know, and that's the unfortunate. That's, that's fact, you know. And mm -hmm. it makes it very difficult for when yeah. people live at the beach. Regina? Yeah, on um, the bicentennial wall, forbidding if you were going to put that on the warrant, is that would you accept all types of like local bids for that? We would. They they need to be qualified. Uh, it's a specialized construction. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, but our bid would our bids go out. Local, not local. I mean, it's anybody I've actually who's willing had to get it. Someone who's local say that they are qualified to do the work. So should I just have them contact? Yep. When when we put this bid out, it will go to. Um, we do a list. Of, we call it a vendor's list. The purchasing policy says ten, unless it's too specialized to get ten. Mm -hmm. And then it goes out on our website, and notice gets sent. And most companies usually have a person whose job it is to go from place to place to place and look at construction you know hubs for this type of work i would say any contractor that could bond the work because we're we would normally require or yeah you our town's purchasing a, a bond of the construction value if they can uh, get someone to back them on that bond mm -hmm. then they are a, a legitimate contractor yeah. that would probably be eligible and qualified to do the work mm. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you. And Jim, did you have any more comments? Nope. Um, moving on to the Smuddy Nose Agreement. Yeah, that, and I think we um, touched on it. Touched on that earlier, but it's Finest Kind Brewing LLC. Uh, the some of the Smuddy Nose brands they actually <laughs> still brew there. Yes. But I think from our conversation earlier that where we stand with them is that uh, the digesters are online. They're being run up, if you will, fitted out. Uh, make sure that they operate. We're going to get some nice hard data from them as to how low or how effective they are at reducing BOD. Mm -hmm. And um, the permit that uh, I did look it up earlier today, and I copied Regina on it. Uh, matter of fact, I think I sent it to everybody. Yeah, they did. Um, their permit is actually up in November. Mm -hmm. So once the digesters are operational and we see those numbers, they're going to be issued another operational permit based upon those digesters. Mm -hmm. So that's that's basically where we stand. So they're currently under uh, working within their permit and doing what we asked them to do. 
10 years ago. And we have three months here that has shown what they're monitoring, their three months, and that is without any Without any digester online, those three reports. But okay. I'm expecting better numbers with the uh, digesters online. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in and giving us Thank your you. report. And it gives us plenty of things to think about. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sure it does. Thank you for all you <coughs> Moving on to the town manager's report. Mr. Welsh. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, as uh, Jen had explained, uh, construction is ongoing on the drainage improvements on Park Avenue. Uh, they did encounter some ledges she described, and they've encountered some more today, uh, which they are uh, joyously removing, uh, even though they just assumed they never actually encountered it. Mm. Um, just want to make the point that uh, the contractor is doing very good work. He's negotiated around the sewer main and the gas lines uh, without incident. Uh, work continues, and we want people to observe the detours and be cautious of the men and equipment in the roadway. Yeah. That, that equipment is going to move eventually down to where Kate's, where Kate's kingdom was removed yeah. so they can do the work down there. Mm -hmm. That's important that you pay attention to what's going on. Uh, Unitel uh, completed the work requested by the board on Kings Highway within two days of your request. The MS-1 extension requested by the Board of Selectmen was approved by the Department of Revenue Administration. It may be necessary to repeat that depending upon the, the completion date of the revaluation so that we don't end up paying penalties for the hmm. MS-1 filing. ADA improvements uh, to the town offices will be completed by October 18th depending upon the availability of contractors and I've given the board sort of an overview provided by Public Works of what's going to happen out here. Uh, we had to make some extensive re, uh, changes uh, in order to meet the grade requirements for the ADA requirements. Mm. Uh, we want to extend a, a, a special thank you <coughs> for the ladies and gentlemen of the Hampton Garden Club, <coughs> excuse me, for their great work <coughs> they perform each summer around the town offices and in various locations within the community. They make us look really great. Thank you for your outstanding work. Yeah. I also have, Mr. Chairman, uh, a certificate of appreciation that was presented by the Hampton Chamber of Commerce oh. for the town's 30 years uh, in, in assisting in the Seafood Festival. Wow. I also have, I'll pass around, <clears throat> there's actually three of them here that need to be signed. Uh, at your previous meeting, you authorized the withdrawal of uh, $3,490.52 from the <laughs> Public Works Equipment Capital Reserve Fund in order to accomplish that, we actually have to uh, sign a document so the trustees will know that you've actually given the authority to do that, which you did at your previous meeting. That's it, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Probably enough. <laughs> Questions for the town manager's report? Mrs. Wolseley? Uh, nothing at the moment. Regina? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Welch. I just wanted to say late this afternoon, I did get a couple emails from... Uh, residents down on King's Highway, and I did forward those over to the town manager. Um, so that's not on the town manager's that's report? That has to do with the uh, unit till The report on the change work. of the equipment? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. So <clears throat> I did forward that over. Yeah. And then the ADA improvements at the town hall. So that money's coming from our current budget, right? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. And the other thing I had was nothing, and I concur on the work of the Hampton Garden Club. We they always do a like great to have job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. They've been doing so that now. for years. It's a, there you go, my dear. Good report. And uh, you know, you talked about that detour in Park Ave. Yes. I hope a friend of mine's not watching tonight because he told me I couldn't figure out where to go. Oh. Like, you got to be totally. <clears throat> You have to be right in the groove. Yeah, because the signs are all over the place. <laughs> I said, if you couldn't figure out how to, where to go, it was I, I your did, fault. I did notice this morning that there was some difficulty. I, I followed a gentleman down uh, uh, Route 1A, and uh, he obviously wasn't paying too much attention where he was going because he deliberately ran through a couple of sawhorses oh, God. Uh, without knowing where he was going. And, and a lot of, um, uh, you know, pylons that were out there, and he finally managed to negotiate going north, but uh, people just aren't used to having um, detours, and, and it, they all of a sudden come up on you, and they're a surprise, but we hope everybody is, is safe, Attention. and that's what happens. So. 
Um, is it okay? We'll, I think we should switch new business to old business. Okay. Uh, it will probably, we have some people in the audience. Um, so, n number one is request to remove materials from trustees of the trust fund website related to SEC sanction of Warren Mackelson. Mr. Felzo. Um, Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we received a request. Uh, our, uh, question from the uh, Chairman of the Board of Trustees uh, regarding the possibility of removing that off the website. That, that was a question that was asked to them. And uh, I don't have the authority to do that. My understanding was that the material was put up there at the request of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Attorney General, and the Board of Selectmen. Uh, so I'm kind of asking you, where do you want to go with this if you want to go anywhere with it? Mrs. Wolseley? And we're not here to rewrite history if that's on the website and that uh, whatever happened X number of years ago, uh, I'm opposed to touching it. Leave it alone. Regina? I think that if it was recommended by the AG's office, unless we've heard from them to recommend to uh, take it off or do anything with it, we should probably just leave it up on the website for now. And mm -hmm. Mr. Waddell? Same. So do we need to have a motion or do we have a consensus here? It's, it's there. I, I think you've reached a consensus. No, we have a consensus uh, that not, we don't want to see it changed. Right. Uh, so moving on to number two is the question of allowing sports betting. Good question. Do you I, want, I don't have an it? answer for it, but uh, it would be an article that would go on the warrant for the annual town meeting uh, for the town to make a decision on whether or not they should allow it. My understanding is it's a charitable type event. Uh, money goes to charitable purposes uh, at schools and so on and so forth. Uh, and it is highly regulated by the state of New Hampshire. So it would be similar to what's going on right now in town. I yeah. make a motion that we put it on the Warren article. I'll second. Yeah, I, um, for discussion, I would like to say I'm definitely in favor of it. I think it's a, uh, a better thing if, if they do it correctly than what the regular uh, gambling is in my opinion. Ah, uh, yes. Um, but I'm not, I want to, I would want to make sure that the uh, charitable uh, people that are, in t you know, that are on in line there to get, to have charitable evenings for their charities would still be able to get a, a percentage of the sports betting. And another question I have, because I was on the board when we allowed the, uh, the gambling, um, was that it was supposed to be, number one, you were supposed to be uh, given, uh, if you were from Hampton, you were supposed to be given a pref preference over people that weren't from Hampton. I think that's fallen by the wayside. And that was in the um, uh, approvals, as far as I know. Yeah. So I think that's something that we're going to have to look at, but I would like to see it go. But I would like to make sure that the uh, different entities in are you, Hampton are, are given are a you sure of that? Because I, I know a lot of... I was of, on the board when it happened. No, 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 no. Hampton, I know a lot of Hampton charities that get the 10 days. No, no, they do. But there are others that I have heard of for people in Hampton that are not considered, and there are other, there are other groups that are coming from Manchester. Hmm. So I think that we need to look at that as a board. I think so, but I, you know. I think if you check it, you'll find it out. That's All my right. memory, unless it didn't go. Right. Um, it did somehow evolved into something different. But that was definitely, I was, uh, I believe it was the zoning board that I must have been on then, or even the planning board, and Mrs. Wolseley. Is, is it my understanding that this will be or we would vote to include this on the warrant next year. Yes. A private petition article. I don't want. I don't want to. Well, be. we will decide that when the time comes. Right. If that's it's something what I'm saying. that the board wants to support, or if it is a private. Um, well, not necessarily what the board wants to support. Just to, if no, these, I think by if I these think individuals are motivated to put a warrant, a private petition article on the warrant. Fine. I'm not sure that it's that way. I think that it's up to the Board of Selectmen to put it on just like it was with Keno. Yep. Um, yes. It could be either way, but yeah. usually the Selectmen put it on. Yes. Right, but so. we wouldn't be drafting the article or anything? Yes, we would. would it, oh, okay. Possibly. It was passed by the legislators, yeah. right? Yeah. 
and, and signed by the governor, and it's up to the towns, the to same decide. as Keno, whether they want to accept it. There's so very specific can, language yeah. that has to then go Then why wouldn't it be a town warrant article? Well, that's what I'm saying. It probably will be. So you yeah. wouldn't that would be my right. guess. It okay. will be a town warrant article. So we're not you know? anticipating a private petition article. No. This is something that would be generated here. Yeah. Yeah. What I'll I just, do... I just want to understand what, what we're I doing. What I will do, given your input, is that yeah. I will uh, get a copy of the statute, I will draft the warrant article in accordance with the statute, and I'll send it to yeah, you for okay. examination. Okay. Yeah. I just want to understand where it's supposed to come from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the concern was they wanted specific people wanted to know if the town was going to draft something. If yes. not, they were prepared to, yeah. petition. to do a petition. And I think that the town, and, and we have a, uh, it, it's, uh, we're, let's take it to a vote. All those in favor of putting it? Well, I want to see. I want to read it first. Well, we're. Well, have Fred will give us a copy. We're going to work on it. That's what we're voting. Yes, on. that's. Yep. Okay, so phrase we'll that. Not we'll get you the draft so you can't plus the statute. It time. Okay, so we're we're voting on. I'm, yes, we just on, voted that we're going to go forward to work on it. That the town manager will work on it. Yes. Okay. And then we'll have a discussion. Okay. Of whether the town wants to support it. Okay. But I am asking that we check out. That about I'll check the other reference. as well. Yeah, yeah, because I think it's something that is worth looking into. Um, <sighs> next, we have any other new business? I just have two quick things. Yeah. Well, this could be new or old, but um, <laughs> <laughs> neighborhoods have been coming forward about speeding issues, and I know this has been going on, and I told them to please submit something in writing to the town manager and the chief of police. Is that the best people to I would say send so. it to? I would say so. Okay, because I know that this is occurring all through town. I'm um, recently hearing about Bon Air and Esker Road, and they're saying that it is residents that are, you know, speeding. So mm -hmm. I think that if we have something in writing, hopefully with several names on it, maybe there's something that we can do about it. I, I think we're going to find out that they're doing this in every town all over the United States. People are complaining about speeding, from what I'm seeing. When I was in Florida, it was on the news two or three times. And, uh, and it's always, and I think it's because of right now they had it on the news having to do with going back to school and all the different people that lived near schools were, you know, voicing their opinions. So I think this is happening everywhere. Yeah, it right. doesn't mean it's right, but yeah. it's up to the people to take responsibility not to do it because, as you pointed it out, it is the people that live in these neighborhoods that are doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and one other quick thing, we, I noticed that we got something from Meals on Wheels, and I just wanted to say that I accompanied them one day, and they're an excellent operation, and they help a lot of residents in New Hampshire. Yeah. So anything the town can do, yeah. I support that. I think I was reading it, too, and I think this is interesting. We maybe can mention it. Uh, the highlights of this article, 31.9% of Hampton's population is 60 or older, mm -hmm. and it's 9.7%. 65 and above are, of the people that are 65% and above, 85 years, are 85 years or age older, or there's 335 people that are older than 85 years old in Hampton, and 493 older adults had incomes of less than 20,000 per year. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these things to do with the elderly, in my opinion, is the most important mm -hmm. thing we have here at Hampton. Mm. You know, we have to really look into, you know, making sure that, you know, we can do as much as we can yeah. and plan for the future, because there's going to only yeah. be more elderly people. One of the things that we've done, Mr. Chairman, is, as you know, we're going through a revaluation this year. Mm -hmm. And as we've done in the past, we're going to propose to the board a warrant article so that the percentage of the increase of the revaluation will be offset by the percentage of increase in the elderly exemption. Nice. So that people will stay basically level if you're in the yeah. elderly exemption category. And like's been said here before, Hampton is the oldest or second oldest town in New Hampshire, and New Hampshire is the oldest or second oldest state. In yeah. The, so yeah. we have a, it's an issue here. Okay. Moving on to new business or, um, Old business, actually. <laughs> uh, Exeter Hampton Retreatment and Disposal of Wastewater Agreement. Mr. Walsh. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, as you will remember, we have been through several variations of this. Uh, I've given you a copy of the final draft. 
It has been approved in Exeter, has been approved by both of our town councils. Uh, I'd, what I'd like is permission to send this to the state of New Hampshire for their approval of the Department of Environmental Services. If they approve, it will then go to the Attorney General for examination. If he approves, it will come back for signature by everybody. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. I Any discussion? I have a, a question. I still don't understand where the, we just put a small portion of our waste through the Exeter sewer line. Correct. What relevance does that have to this? I mean, well, I, where do we, how do we know what Exeter's doing for retreatment and disposal and stuff? Well, they're regulated the same as we are. Oh, okay. And, and the, the reason this agreement is here is because under the law, we can't do this without an intergovernmental agreement between the two towns. Because it's, okay, because it's two, two independent communities. Two different communities. municipalities, right. Okay. All right. I, I just won't, have... I won't get excited. One quick thing for budget purposes, <laughs> just to note that the fee has gone from 25319 and then last year we had it, which shows in the budget, is 33813 And for nineteen, it looks like we're going to have to have budgeted... About 60000 About 60000 Yeah. So mm. they substantially increased their fees. Well, it's, it, it has, that has more to do with the fact that, that uh, Exeter is under a mandate to rebuild its entire sewer treatment plant, which ah. is a $100 million mm -hmm. expense. Mm -hmm. And since they have an enterprise fund, all of that money goes onto the sewer rate. Mm. So over a period of years, of course, it's a payback. The bonds get paid off the rate. So that rate's going to continue to go up. Remember when you and I went to the Can planning we board? The, did we, we have to do the well, vote. And asking for the impact fees and stuff. And you mentioned to replace the Hamptons treatment plant. If we had to re rebuild it, you said sixty million to a hundred million. Yeah. So I guess that hundred million is in the ballpark. Uh, yeah, and and, and Exeter uh, got an order to do it, so they're it's behind the eight ball. Work they don't <laughs> yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah, it seems like Exeter has been uh, pretty supportive, though. Their voters have. They have. They've been very supportive. Everything that's been happening over there. Yep. Number two is Hampton's appointment to represent the town to serve on the Commission on Drinking Water established by HB 495. I thought for a second that you were going to leave the water part off. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did. <laughs> Uh, this is a requirement of the uh, legislature. They passed an act, uh, Chapter 329 of the Acts of 2019, and uh, we have the opportunity to submit a, re a, a nomination to serve on the committee that was created. Mm -hmm. and I've sent you a copy of the legislation. Yeah. Um, the committee will make up their own requirements as they go along, so I understand the first meeting will be sometime towards the end of this month. Mm. So do we have um, somebody that wants to represent the town? Mr. Chairman, I would be interested in being on this committee, but I believe Representative Cushing said at the last meeting that the first meeting was on Friday, September 27th in the morning, which... I would be unable to attend the first meeting, and if it was going to be going forward the fourth Friday of every month, I have a prior commitment on that morning, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I would be the best candidate. Mm -hmm. But Does it have to be a selectman? It doesn't say that it has to be a selectman. We can set this out if uh, anyone would like to put... Do we have to do it tonight, or can we ask maybe... Couple yeah. of weeks. I think you can do it at your pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we put it out there if anyone would like to be, maybe Max, you can help us out. Um, if uh, somebody that might want to represent the town to serve on the Commission on Drinking Water, which yeah. with all of what just recently happened, it, someone might find it quite interesting. And I'm sure other people would too, but again, that's my busiest day of the week is Friday morning. Uh, yes. <laughs> so. It's not something that will be good for me. Um, so anyone that wants to put your name out there, please call uh, 
Mr. Walsh's office, Christina, yeah. will be glad to yeah. uh, Absolutely. work with you. Okay. Number three is waiver of interest under RSA 165, colon, 2889 Hampton Trailer Park. Um, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, this is a, a rather confusing situation. This re re pertains to a, uh, a lien that was placed against a mobile home in 1994 for $1,465.28. I don't know what it was for, but it was a lien. It was placed, in, and it may have been for welfare assistance. It turns out that that particular mobile home was sold in 2003, and whoever did the title search never found the lien, uh -huh. so it wasn't paid. It was also sold again in 2014, same situation. Uh, the current owner now uh, came in to pay the $1,465.28 and found that there was an interest charge of $5,000 uh, oh. in addition to that. Uh, and as you can see, this is, this is the third attempt to try to sell the property. He came in and tried to pay the principal. Uh, and. I mean, we could always say, yeah, you've got to go back against the title company, but that's three title companies ago. That's a long time ago, and I just don't think that's probably fair given all this period of time. I make a motion we waive the interest. Yeah, I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. <laughs> Thank that's you. All I, that's all yeah. I have, sir. So do we have any closing comments? Um, yeah, really quickly, uh, I've been talking, and I... Representative um, Edgar is here, too. Um, with all this fussing about the state parks and, and all this business, I asked uh, somebody when we, we got together uh, Monday when the governor was here and all that, and I said, for heaven's sakes, why can't we get the crosswalks painted on Route 1 in time for the summer season, 1A on, in time for the summer season? I said, oh, the state parks doesn't have anything to do with that. It's the DOT. So I'm just wondering if we can get anybody to uh, twist their wrists a little bit and make them paint the crosswalks in a timely manner. If it's not parks, if it's DOT, I don't care who it is, but somebody from the state come and paint the confounded crosswalks. They've so already twisted their arms. Their arms look like pretzels. <laughs> so it doesn't seem to matter. Well, you're right. But I thought I would try. Yeah, we, we can, can bring it up again. Somebody awake up in DOT. Make a motion to adjourn at 2037. Uh, 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 <laughs> not quite yet. Mr. Chairman, uh, before you go ahead and adjourn, I'd like you to go into a non meeting to discuss collective bargaining. So you can adjourn. We don't need to go into a regular meeting to do that or non-public. We just need to designate we're going into a, a, a non-meeting. A non-meeting. All right. I, may, I make a motion to adjourn at 2037. I'll into second. a non-meeting. Into a non-meeting. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. <laughs>